Welcome to another episode of Unscripted. Today we are honored to have a veteran on this show. This person has done it all. You know, every time I interact with this woman, I walk home with so much knowledge because she's a wealth of knowledge. Florence Masebe. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, Matara? I'm alright. She's looking beautiful in the vendor attire. I am in vendor, you know, and she doesn't make a mistake. She always makes sure that wherever she goes, she represents Bavenda. I have to. If I don't do it, who is going to? I can't imagine somebody getting out of KZN and deciding to wear Chivenda every day. Yes. So I have to do it for my own people. You're also very vocal on social media. I mean, at one point they were attacking you for your hair and everything. You even started swearing. Tell me about that. Do they now want to change your hair? I don't Do think I was... Give you a weave? I don't think I was swearing. I was just putting people in their place. So, you know, people uh. must be clapped for, for crossing the line. Uh. What's my hair got to do with you? Uh. That's what my head must. Can I please live in peace? But there's a lot of expectation, especially for people that appear on TV, celebrities, they're expecting that, no, their hair must not be as kafir as our owner. They must have long, expensive weaves. They must not even walk barefoot. But, but you are as rural as they Matala, can. when did I <laughs> sign that contract um, to... And I'm this person. I'm the person who says, you want your weaves? Go ahead. You want to fry your scalp? Your choice. You want to be porcelain Barbie 24-7? Hey, if it's working for you, go with what makes sense to you, my hand. But just don't come with what you want for you and impose it mm. on Florence. Mm. I'm quite cool. I'm so comfortable waking up with this hair. Mm. It's cheap even, by the way, you know, because I, I don't really spend much on it. Uh -huh. I, I, I go to that section in The Chemist where it's the no-name brand type of basic oils that I use. Uh -huh. I don't spend more than a hundred rand a month on this hair. I'm thankful for that. But it's not even about money. Um, it's about what I choose to do or not do with my hair. Uh -huh. And over the years, I've really learned to say, why must I listen to people thinking I need... As an actor, I don't need any of those attachments to become better at my work. The craft is all in me. Oh. So I know what to bring to a character to make her real and to make her come to life and steal your heart as a viewer. Oh. Don't expect things out of me that I never agreed to do. I don't remember ever signing a contract to have a weave. I don't remember ever signing a contract not to work barefoot. And I don't remember ever signing a contract to leave my clothes alone. I used to dress like this at university 20 years ago. And you're still dressing like this even today? Because it's me. I can't run away from who I am. I never tried anyway. Uh, I mean, you, we were recently affected by the floods. They were, there was thunderstorm and everything. But you were also so much affected. You shared some of the pictures uh, of your house flooded. And we hear that you lost everything. Can you just tell us about that? Well, I didn't exactly lose everything. I'm still here and my children are still healthy and standing and unharmed. So I lost physical things, material things. It's hard. But um, I found a humorous part of all of it. I'm laughing at myself as we try to clean up. Mm. Mm. Life happens. Yeah. Life happens. These are things you normally read about or watch on TV and see them happening to other people. They came to our home this time. Uh, uh. But do you look at it and see, you know what, this is actually a blessing because others will look at it and think, this looks like a curse. Why? You know, my child, I don't believe in curses. I don't believe in curses. I don't believe in bad luck or good luck. I just believe life happens. Um, flash floods happen. Did they start happening last week? Did they start happening yesterday or a year ago? No, they happened. Mm. It was my turn. With the floods as well, you were busy working on your upcoming book and it also got wiped away. <laughs> Are you ever going to have that personal gen, your journal? Because now some of the things are like lost with the, with the, with the flood. No, the book is safe because the book comes from here. Okay. That, that's number one. 
Um, there are things that the water took, and I think the, the, the notebooks that the water has taken are the things that belonged only to my heart and those notebooks. I wasn't meant to share them. It's okay. Mm. Uh, my writing a book was a totally different journey, by the way. It, it wasn't so much, hey, let me write a book. Uh, it was my daily reflections. Mm. And because those daily reflections helped me heal, I started sharing them with other women over time. And they were touching them and helping them heal. And I thought, you know what? I'm such a selfish person when it comes to stories and what happens and my processes uh, and my journey. Uh, For once, uh, just give this uh, to someone else. Uh, Share it. And, you know, it took a lot. But, but it's definitely coming. We're going to... Definitely. It's called Reflections of a Morning Queen. And it's just a collection of those poetic entries that I had during Is my Is this life. about... Uh, the period you've gone through, or and you're still going through of, of, of losing your son, are you pinning everything down, writing your emotions, how you're dealing with it? And I don't write everything. I believe there are things that should always be left unsaid. And um, the gift of, of words, the gift of poetry and prose helps me to choose what to share. So if I wake up one day and I sit down and something comes and I write it, it's beautiful. Some of the things I've written in notebooks on a plane. Mm. Um, some of the things I write in hotels when I'm away working. Mm. And it's fine. And, and some of the things I write in notebooks that are marked not to be shared. So I won't give everything, but I've noticed that um, every other woman I know who has reached out to me in whatever way because of their own pain when I've given them some of the things I've written, I've assisted them. And so I decided that I'm going to come up with a book that is part book, part journal. Uh -huh. So it will be me and my reflections, and it will be left with enough blank pages as well within that book for them to reflect their own journey because there's no manual uh -huh. on how to grieve. There's no manual on how to mourn. There are cultural guidelines in different places. But when it comes to the personal journey with your pain, everybody has to walk them and let their light guide them. Talking about grieving, I mean, it's interesting that uh, people expect uh, those who are grieving to grieve in a certain way. And if you're grieving in the way that you, you feel it works for you, they tend to pinpoint and judge. Did you get some of those with people judging you the way you were grieving? Or the way you are grieving your... I've never your been a person for explanations and impressing people. So, if somebody tried, they haven't had the opportunity to come close enough to say it. I, I am also a deeply cultural person, so there are things I've been very strict and to the letter with. Um, but that is a choice Florence makes. Um, I didn't have... A royal council of 13 old women sitting saying you will do as we say mm. it is me knowing what is important for me and choosing to honor that journey and that process that way mm. it makes sense to me i do it that way mm. but then of course you have we live in a very uh um we, we live in a, in a country that is so diverse people think they know what must happen mm in everybody else's culture. They know what must happen in everybody else's household. Um, culture belongs to a people, then it belongs to a clan, then belongs to a family, then belongs to a household. People choose for themselves, and this is what I did, is what we chose for me. You've been hiding for quite some time now. We've not seen you on television uh, doing what we know you for. And we are told you are not just hiding. You are actually hiding in the presidency as the advisor for Deputy Minister Buti Manamela. Just uh, give us a bit <laughs> about I, what you're you doing. You know, I there. actually did not entirely hide because I shot all of Ring of Lies while in that office. Mm. So, you know, I, I find a way of, of juggling my hide, I guess. Um, you know, I'm privileged and, and honored to be given a huge task of advising the pres presidential task team on creative industries. Mm -hmm. 
and it is a task team that is headed by the Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Mr. Putimana Mela, and I am the advisor on that. Oh. So we, we have a lot of work on our hands and we have to get up and down and integrate everything that happens within the arts and try to find smoother systems within all the assistance that already as exist within government of finding uh, better ways to make the arts function and, and finding ways to build a better environment mm. for the industry mm. as a business uh, that exists and that contributes very um, largely mm. to the country's GDP. Okay, are we seeing you anytime soon on any of the channels on our screens? Um, what is soon? I don't know. Soon can be tomorrow. Soon can be uh, soon can January. Be into the, I can do a Jesus soon. <laughs> <laughs> but we want you back on TV. We want to see you. I love TV. I love TV. I love working. Um, I make time to do a lot of TV work when, when it makes sense to me. Mm. I want to tell you something that really irritates me about the industry in this country. There I go again and I promised myself to be really nice in this interview. I kind of believe that I'm at a point where I've done enough for you to know when it's me you want for your project and when it's not. Uh -huh. So when you send a list of people you want to audition, I laugh a little bit and go, but don't audition me. I should audition you because you're the no-name brand that's coming as a director. I don't know you. You're trying your luck with your new show. Mm. Why are you still subjecting me to an audition, but to So you so end many, your stripes and I, you live in audition. I'm right? really not being self-important about it, but I don't want to be queuing for auditions. So maybe that's why you don't see me on TV because I want people to make up their minds. Uh -huh. I probably give really terrible auditions as well. Oh. Maybe I'm not as good as I believe I am. Oh. But besides being in front of the camera, I know you're doing a lot of work behind the camera. You actually are producing an end. You're going to make me cry because one of the big things that is lost in the flood is um, Ayedao, the movie script that I'm working so hard on. So I'm crossing fingers and toes to check how the IT people can help me uh, retrieve the bulk of the progress. But I, I also believe that when you've worked enough on something, um, you will still find it. It's inside you. It came from your brain. The brain will process it again. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it gave me an opportunity to do an extra draft over and above what I was planning to do. Uh, so that is a setback a bit because it means we don't have a full... Um, to shoot on the deadlines I had given myself. Mm. But back home, there's a whole lot of things that we do now. Um, you know, I, I have the Nyamutenga Heritage Foundation, which really looks at issues of heritage and the arts and crafts and, and the things that, that um, rural women make with their hands. Mm. Um, rural women and men, uh, uh, mostly young people as well, mm. because we're not learning. There's a simple... Um, thing I always look at to say, goodness, it is so hard to find something as simple as uh, um, a well-made, I don't know what it is in English, rufo, uh, 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 you know, uh, we're all cooking with these things that are made in, in the sold in supermarkets. Uh, but when I grew up, um, you learned how to work with wood to make the best leho that you could come up with, mm. the best turupeto. Mm. And, and now we don't have such, we're losing such things because we're not teaching the young ones. Mm. So the work I do back home really is about saying there are things that are important that you must continue to do. The clothes I'm wearing, younger generations need to learn from the older ones how they're made and how they're worn and what the do's and don'ts are mm. with traditional wear. Um, you know, I, I'm working with a whole lot of young people who are learning how to make traditional drums. Um, the wood, the, 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 the animal hide that they select for that. Oh. Um, I don't know a lot of young people who know how to make these. Oh. But they remain truly special and cannot be replaced. So these are skills that are important and maybe one day they can learn that crafting is actually where their gold lies and oh. they will do very well with it. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us on Unscripted, guys. That was Makazi Florence Masebe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh.